Formula 1 has been so crazy in 2021 that a post-race protest was perhaps just as inevitable as the championship being decided with a final lap pass for the win in the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. Just listen to that. How amazing is it that that sentence is even real? Wow. After Max Verstappen won his first world championship in the most dramatic style possible, Mercedes lodged two protests based on the shenanigans that went on around the late race safety car period that proved so decisive. After such a thrilling season, it seemed a shame that the result should be placed into doubt so more arguing could take place behind the scenes. But did Mercedes have a point and was it right to lodge the protests? Once the track was cleared following Nicholas Latifi's late race crash that brought out the safety car, Mercedes was furious about the confusion over the lapped cars that were between Hamilton and Verstappen being allowed to unlap themselves ahead of the single lap showdown for the title. Race Control initially declared the lapped cars would not be allowed to pass the leader, which had incensed Red Bull because it believed it protected Hamilton, who was on old hard tyres, while Verstappen had pitted for fresh softs. But then race director Michael Massey changed his mind, ordering only the cars that were between Hamilton and Verstappen to get themselves out of the way. Mercedes felt this judgement call was not allowed for in the regulations. It believed the rules specified all lapped cars should have been ordered to unlap themselves, so therefore the correct procedures had not been followed. More importantly, it also contested that the sporting regulations state that once the last lapped car has passed the leader, the safety car will return to the pits at the end of the following lap. If that had been applied in this case, then the safety car would have pulled into the pits at the end of the final lap, leaving Hamilton clear to take the chequered flag and win the championship. Because of this, Mercedes requested that the race results be taken from the end of the penultimate lap when Hamilton was still in front. Mercedes also lodged a separate protest against Verstappen's driving under safety car conditions when he pulled alongside Hamilton just before the restart and briefly appeared to edge ahead of the Mercedes. Unsurprisingly, Red Bull saw it differently. Team boss Christian Horner said the decision over the lapped cars was absolutely the right call, accepting that the Red Bull pit wall was screaming at Massey to get them out of the way so Hamilton and Verstappen could battle it out to the end. Horner added that it was unheard of to leave the lapped cars in the way, so he praised Race Control's decision under difficult circumstances with both title chasing teams shouting at them from the pit wall. And we'll come back to that particular scenario in a little bit. Unsurprisingly, Red Bull didn't agree with the stewards' decision not to investigate the lap one incident between Hamilton and Verstappen. Horner said he couldn't understand why Hamilton wasn't asked to hand the position back, but he summed things up perfectly when he said, but that's all history now. Never a truer word, Christian. Never a truer word. Next up, we're going to explain why the protests failed, but very quickly, if you're not yet subscribed to our channel, but you're enjoying what you're seeing here, feel free to hit that button anytime to join our ever-expanding crew of motorsport fans. The first verdict we received from the stewards was the straightforward one. They accepted that Verstappen did end up ahead of Hamilton before the restart for a very short period of time, but they were satisfied that Verstappen got himself back behind Hamilton as quickly as he could at a time when both cars were accelerating and braking in anticipation of the restart. But let's get on to the more meaty decision. The stewards accepted that the rules around letting lapped cars through before a restart were not applied fully, but they added that this was overridden by the next article of the sporting regulations. Article 48.13 states that once the message safety car in this lap has been displayed, it is mandatory to withdraw the safety car at the end of that lap. Elsewhere in the sporting regs, Article 15.3 gives the race director overriding authority over the use of the safety car, which the stewards said included its deployment and withdrawal. As for Mercedes' request to base the results on the positions at the end of the penultimate lap, the stewards deemed it was not appropriate to take a measure that would shorten the race distance retrospectively. As well as Mercedes and Red Bull submitting evidence in the hearing, race director Michael Massey made his own contributions. He said that the purpose of Article 48.12 regarding lapped cars was to remove any cars that would interfere with the racing between the leaders. 
Red Bull also suggested that the wording regarding any lapped cars does not mean all lapped cars, but that dictionary debate was not referenced by the stewards in their decision. Massey also pointed out they had long been agreed by all teams that where possible, it was highly desirable for the race to end under racing conditions rather than behind a safety car, meaning the actions he took to accelerate the restart process were justified. So effectively, while one rule around the safety car process wasn't followed to the letter, the stewards felt that the actions of Massey were covered well enough by other areas of the sporting regulations. While this all makes for a great soap opera and Netflix is surely rubbing its hands together for the fourth season of Drive to Survive, ultimately it was a shame for the championship celebrations to have the shine taken off them by the protests and hearings that went on post-race. And there could still be more to come, with Mercedes announcing its intention to appeal the second of the verdicts. That gives it a 72 hour window to decide if it wants to go through with taking the matter to the FIA International Court of Appeal. As we said at the beginning of this video, it seemed almost inevitable that this most dramatic and fractious of championship battles would end up with drama off track and on it. Nobody wanted to see Mercedes and Red Bull personnel walking back and forth to the stewards' offices after the race. Even Verstappen rolled his eyes and said the protest summed up the season. Mercedes even brought its own legal counsel with it to Abu Dhabi in anticipation of such a scenario, although we understand that was predominantly in case of a controversial incident between the two drivers in battle, rather than the FIA potentially making a mess of its own procedures. That strategy didn't sit well with Red Bull, with Horner saying on Sunday night it was a shame Mercedes had taken that step, before adding that Red Bull doesn't go racing with barristers. He also called Mercedes' original protests a little bit desperate. And given how brilliant Verstappen and Hamilton have been this season, for their unforgettable battle to end under a cloud of protests and potentially an appeal doesn't seem right. This year we've had better insight than ever before into what goes on behind the scenes between the teams and the FIA during races, with the addition to the TV broadcasts of the radio chatter between the teams and Michael Massey. During that final safety car period, those communications descended into farce, with both team bosses shrieking at Massey any time they felt he was making a decision that went against them. Yes, the stakes will never be higher again at the end of a safety car period for as long as F1 exists, but does that excuse grown men howling down a radio channel to the person trying to call the shots? In the end, it escalated to a level of shouting and whining that was more suited to a bunch of footballers surrounding a referee rather than the crucial decisive moments of a Formula One season. The question is, is it right for teams to have that much access to the race director in the heat of the moment for the purposes of lobbying or should they be told to back off and let him get on with his job? Everybody wanted this epic championship fight to be decided on the track. And from a neutral's perspective, it doesn't get much better than a last lap pass for the race win and the championship. Unfortunately, fears or expectations that the destiny of the championship would then play out in the stewards room also came to pass. But when the dust finally settles on the madness of F1 2021, how will you remember this incredible season? Will the lasting memory be of two world-class talents pushing each other to ever-increasing heights, or will the legal wranglings and off-track bitterness between the teams forever dampen your view of a thrilling championship? Let us know what you think in the comments, give this video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed our rundown of everything that happened on Sunday night, and to keep up with every major development in the world of Formula 1, and to keep yourself entertained during the off-season, make sure you're subscribed to our channel.